What's happening guys? So today what I want to do is give you three tools for Amazon FBA and I'm quickly going to explain to you why these are so important. Here is concept number one. We have our first graph and on this side we're going to have sales per day and on the bottom we're going to have BSR to 100 sales a day. We're going to have 50 sales a day. We're going to have 10 sales per day. BSR of like 10, like extremely good. And then up to, let's say, 1,000. And let's say up to 10,000. The first thing is we want to make sure that products in this market are making a lot of sales. And remember, there's a relationship between sales per day and BSR. So if we can look at BSRs, we can establish sales per day. And that relationship flows like this. So the more sales per day you're making, the lower the BSR that you're going to have and so on. If you're making less sales per day, you are going to have a higher BSR. Now, in my opinion, anything with a BSR less than, say, 5000 is really good. This is like a really good range to be in over here. In most categories, something with 10,000 BSR or less is still selling multiple times a day. So this is still really good. However, less than 5,000 is great for pretty much any category, a lot of sales per day. So this is the first concept and the first tool we're gonna jump onto on screen actually deals with very quickly establishing the BSR of products straight on Amazon above every single listing that you look at. Okay, concept number two. On the Y axis, we're going to have sales per day. And on the X axis, we're actually going to have review count. And here in this concept, what we're trying to establish is we know that whatever we're looking at has a low BSR and high sales. But now if we look at the high sales, the listings doing a lot of high sales, are all of those the ones with just high review counts? Or are the sales per day actually spread amongst sellers at different review counts? Do the low review count sellers actually make a decent amount of sales? Because remember in the beginning when we do this, we're going to have low review counts. So what can we expect in terms of sales per day? This would be plotted as a line graph by looking at say page one for your main keyword for your specific product. So as an example, we might find that well, we have sellers with 10 reviews doing 15 sales per day. And those with 50 reviews are actually doing 25 sales per day. We've got a seller with 100 reviews also doing 25 sales a day. And we've got a seller with 100 reviews or let's say 120 reviews and they are doing 50 sales per day. And then we've got a seller with 1,000 reviews who's actually doing let's say 70 sales per day. And this way you're able to draw a quick line graph and establish, you know, when you enter this market with lower review counts. So in this area, what can you expect in terms of sales in this block? Now, just in my opinion, I think what you do want to look for is actually sellers with less than 50 reviews on the first page doing a decent amount of sales, at least 10 plus sales per day consistently. In your best case scenario, you're going to find that even sellers with say 500 reviews actually have similar sales amounts to those with low reviews. That's your best possible bet here. But you do want to establish that the customer is willing to buy products with lower review counts. They're not relying too much on the review counts to make their decision. In the worst case scenario, you're going to see like zero sales here and only sales with those with high review counts. And that's obviously something you want to stay away from. But we are going to go through a tool that actually is going to help you establish this relationship very quickly on Amazon as well. And now our third concept. Now here we're actually going to have time on the X axis and BSR on our Y axis. And so here you can see in this section, we're going to have more of our summer, this section more of our winter. And remember, this also depends where you are in the world. But just as an example, we can do it like this. And this is important because here the concept is seasonality. We might have a really good BSR 
right now when we're looking at certain products or potential products but how is that BSR throughout the year is this product something that's going to be evergreen for us or is it something that's going to just spike and have one good period of the year so in this case let's say the potential product that you're looking at is selling extremely well and currently has a BSR of a thousand or so in its category which would be selling very well multiple times per day now how does it sell throughout all of these months we're going to look at a tool that's going to help us establish BSR over time. So we're looking at historical data. So we could go back, say, six months or go back one year and look at the average BSR over all these months to make sure this product category is something if we get into it is going to sell for us throughout the year, not just in one section of the year. So obviously the best possible scenario is that you see a constant BSR or at least average BSR throughout that whole year. That's the best scenario. Now in the worst scenario, what you're going to see is this sells really well right now. Let's say we're in summer and as soon as those winter months come in, this BSR is actually going to skyrocket straight off the chart, maybe to let's say a hundred thousand and sales really just slow down and, and kind of until summer comes back where it will drop all the way back down and that is when you're looking at a uh, seasonal product of course and so these three concepts that we've just gone through are housed within the three tools i'm going to screen share with you now so that you can implement these and, and vet these aspects for whatever potential product you're looking at so with that in mind we're going to jump onto the screen here and I'm going to explain to you what each of these tools are, how you can get them and how they actually work. So as you can see on screen here, I'm on amazon.com and you could be on your relevant marketplace. But as I search any keyword or product or a potential product, you can see that I'm having certain information pull up immediately above that listing. And this is where BSR comes in. So it's pulling up our BSR instantly on top of our listings and we can check the whole of page one here. Remember the BSR in the main category is the one you're concerned with. So anything below 10,000 is decent, below 5,000 is very good. Uh, and these products, for example, will all be selling multiple times a day. This one will be selling very well at 1,900 in all of electronics. Another thing with BSR is you can see where they niche down to. In other words, within electronics, they're within a subcategory there, and that's where they're competing as well in a more niche sense. And this is why you want to also choose your subcategories quite cleverly. If you choose a less competitive subcategory, you could be number one in that subcategory, and that's gonna get you that best seller badge. As you can see here, this one, is number 11 in automotive, so selling extremely well. But in their sub-niche or their sub-category of automotive, boroscopes, they're actually number one. And you can see they have the best seller badge for that there. So this tool is actually a Helium 10 Chrome extension, as you can see here, and this is totally free. So you can head over to helium10.com and download this uh, and install it. And then in your Chrome browser, you're always going to be able to see this BSR just pull up in a nice, easy way for you to see those BSRs instantly. So a quick side note, there are other features to this. You can see if it's FBM or FBA, you can see how many sellers. You can also calculate FBA fees with their little calculator here as well. I do recommend if you ever do use software calculators, also do this manually. Get a piece of paper and punch in your costs and everything so you know this is 100% accurate as well. But that is our quick BSR tool. So guys, on tool number two, we have multiple choices here and you have free and paid versions of this type of tool. And so the first is AMZ Scout Pro. Now AMZ Scout Pro is going to be free for the first six months, I believe, and then you pay for it. You also have Unicorn Smasher, which looks a little bit like this, and that is free. And then you have Jungle Scout Pro Chrome extension, which I've used for quite a long time. And you also have Viral Launches uh, 
market intelligence Chrome extension, which is very good as well. So whichever you choose, these all represent the same information to you. You can see Jungle Scout pulls up like this. And so we're able to evaluate this market based on sales as well as reviews. And that is going to be our second topic here. So for this example, I'm actually going to showcase the viral launch one just because I've been using that the most recently. And now our most important, as we touched on in the concept of this, is the sales versus reviews. Do we actually have lower review counts doing enough sales to justify us entering this market? Because when we start selling, we're going to have really low review counts, right? So we need to know the market, the customers accept those lower review counts as well. So here in these two columns, you can see review quantity of the same products on this page and the monthly sales of these products on this page. And these are the two that we're really going to compare. So we can see here, okay, 128 reviews, not bad, a lot of sales per month, seven year reviews, also a lot of sales per month. And remember 300 sales a month would be 10 per day. So this is a good amount of daily sales, maybe 15 or so. Here again, we can see with 86 reviews, the seller selling 722 a month. That is a lot of sales per day, 22, 23 sales a day and so on. And here's another example. So this looks really good with 14 reviews. The seller is doing 300 sales a month. So they're selling 10 a day with just 14 reviews, which is something you could build up to quite quickly. Remember, if you have a differentiated offering, then the review counts count less. It's going to be less of a deciding factor for customers. They are more interested in the extra value that you're offering. So side notes on this tool is it's also very handy for checking price points as well as brands. Remember, you don't want everything to be bought by the same brand uh, or there to be too much brand loyalty. So if we see all different brands selling well, this is a good sign for us when our brands here. Also price points, I really recommend you stay above $25. These are very nice price points here with probably very good margins on small products like this. Again, guys, you do not have to use Viral Launch. That's a paid service. So is Jungle Scout. But AMZ Scout Pro and uh, Unicorn Smash are going to do the same thing as that. They're going to bring up that same information for you. And on to tool three. Now, this is to check that our BSR remains low over the full year. This ensures we're entering an evergreen market that's going to bring us sales throughout the year and not just in one period of the year. For example, summer seasonal products or winter seasonal products. We want sales throughout the year. So as an example, we can see that this product is selling very well currently 1000 in camera and photo. And again, we could also check our Chrome extension for those sales, but we know it's selling very well right now. Now, if we click into that listing and scroll a bit down on that listing, you're going to see this tool over here. Now on Keeper here, it used to be the case that it was all completely free and they've just changed it over. So if you see here, it's actually showing us the price point over the full time this listing's been live. That's 112 days. You can see all at the bottom right here. But when we choose sales rank, we have to now pay for that feature. Now you can choose to do that if you're brand new to Keeper or you can hover over statistic. And when you hover over statistic, you can see in this green column, okay, under sales rank, green column, the second last number there is the average sales rank over the past 180 days. And that is the key. Over the last six months, what is our average BSR? And that's going to give you a very good indication of how this product sells over time. If that average is much higher than the current BSR, then you might be looking at a problem where it only sells well in certain periods of the year. In my opinion, Anything under 5,000 for the last 180 days is really good. You could even consider things under 10,000 in the last 180 days. Again, you can also see specific points in time like November 30th. But do remember, I know that BSR is high there. This is a brand new product. So you have to take that into account. When any new products are released, it has a very high BSR and then it's obviously going to drop drastically. 
But if your average BSR over the last 180 days is under 5,000 on the product, that's a very good sign that this sells well throughout the year. Another thing you can do is jump to a more established listing that's been there longer and check that average over the last 180 days as well, because it's still going to tell you sales for the specific product type over that six month period and help you establish if these products sell throughout the year and if this is going to be evergreen or period specific for you. Well guys, I hope you got some value in this, in at least the concepts behind these tools. If you're not actually taking these specific tools into your arsenal currently, do check off these aspects when you do product research. It's really gonna help you make sure you choose a product that's gonna sell well, even with low reviews, and it's gonna sell well throughout the year for you. That's really important. If you got value in this, please do subscribe below and turn on those notifications. And thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.